good morning. God bless you. Thank you for coming in today. And for all of you that are excited about the Lord and what today means and represents, just begin to give him praise and thanksgiving. And for all of you that are on a live stream, Facebook and YouTube, we ask that you would click the share button and invite someone else in to join in with us on today. Amen. We know that you will be blessed. And I will be reading from Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning in verse 1. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, upon the first day this week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices that they had prepared and serving others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found that not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth. They said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Why seek ye the living? among the dead he is not here he is risen remember how he spake unto you when he was at in galilee saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again so let's celebrate that jesus christ has risen again we thank you lord we praise you we thank you, we thank and we praise you, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for all that you do. But most of all, we thank you for who you are, our Lord and Savior, Savior the risen King of glory, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who conquered death, the one who redeemed us with your love, the one who made ways of escape out of the way, who conquered the sin and redeemed us, Father. We thank you for all you did. And if that man said in the scripture, Lord, why seek you the living among the dead? We thank you that we serve a living God. We thank you for resurrection power. We thank you for resurrection life. We thank you that we live again. We thank you that we are new creatures in Christ. We thank you that you rose, God, and we rose with you in Jesus' name. Jesus, thank 
you for the finished work of the cross.
we honor you, God. We give you all, all glory, honor, and praise this morning because you're worthy. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And God, we thank you that we are victorious because of you. Anybody know that they can't be defeated because of the sacrifice that he made for us?
sisters in Christ that may be viewing online with you, welcome them as well and take a moment to even text somebody and say, look, you need to be at church. If you're not there physically, go ahead and sign in. Glory to God. Digitally, and we welcome you to the house of the Lord. Glory to God. Anybody glad to be here this morning? Glory to God. Anybody know that his mercies were new even this morning? Hallelujah. We celebrate the risen Savior in this place. Glory to God. We never want to take, you know, for granted for those that are maybe view, visiting and are here for the very first time. We welcome you to the house of the Lord. If this is your very first time attending Family Worship Center, first we want to say God bless you and welcome to the house. We also want to put some information in your hands. You may see some uh, greeters in the aisleway. They're lifting up 
one of our visitors brochures that has a little bit of information about us. So if you are a first time attender to Family Worship Center, we just ask you to please just lift your hand up and say that's me. I'm a first time attender. We want to put some information in your hand. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Any other first time attenders that are here? Welcome to the house of the Lord. Glory to God. Well, hallelujah. Bless you guys there. Amen. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Glory to God. We encourage you to take full advantage of what the Lord has for you today. In that brochure that has the information about us, our, vis our vision, our history, and some of the things that God has called us to, at the bottom portion of that brochure, we would ask that you would take a moment and fill it out, detach it, and place it in the offering container as it goes your way. And so on behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Timothy R. Stokes, and Pastor Tanya C. Stokes, we extend a warm welcome to our first-time attenders, any others that will be visiting with us this morning. Come on, congregation, let's give God glory for those that are here in the house of the Lord this Easter Resurrection Sunday morning. We thank God for you and trust God has a special blessing in store for you today. Amen. We have a full program this morning, so we just encourage you to just open your hearts and get ready to receive. We're going to prepare our hearts now for our youth and our children that will be coming. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Some of us grew up in church, so we know God. Glory to God. You know, it's, it's an awesome thing to be able to be uh, used of God and participate in what God is doing in a, in a church service, even as a youth. Amen. So at this time, we're going to receive our children, and they will be doing our children's Easter resurrection speeches. Amen. Come on, give God glory for them as they come. We should be happy. We should be proud. We should say hallelujah. We shout out loud. God's message on this is today, this resurrection day, that only takes us up to Jesus to take our sins away. Christ the Lord has risen today, angels rolled the stone away, from the tomb wherein he lay, little children come and sing, glory, glory to the King, Christ the Lord of everything, happy resurrection day. Jesus died. One day Jesus came to town. People began to throw their garments down. They began to shout and cheer, Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus is here. We have a young man that's a visitor today and he likes doing speeches, so we just wanted to give him an opportunity just to come up and share with you guys, okay? Resurrection Day. Accepting Jesus as Savior can change your life and mine. 
because he came to die and, and save all mankind. Give praises to God this Easter for what he has done. God raised Jesus from the dead, his one and only son. has eternal life. Whoever rejects the Son will not see life. God's wrath remains on them. Hello, family. We are here to celebrate Resurrection Sunday. The stone has been rolled away. Jesus is no longer in the grave. Jesus is alive and well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
church. We're looking to op reopen our bookstore. Amen. And we're going to have some new inventory. We're looking also to uh, enhance our media department. So we want to reach more souls. And then we're also looking to open our own cafe. I was sharing with Pastor Tanya. I said, wouldn't it be nice if we have our own FWCC coffee that we have here in the church? Amen. So we're looking to do some great things this year. So we, we ask that you would join us on next Sunday as we give our best to the Lord. Amen. Well, are you ready to give this morning? Let us lift our offering up before the Lord. Let us pray over the offering. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that you died for us, oh God, that we may live out. We thank you for this day, and we do not take it for granted, Lord. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus, even as we plant seed, Lord, we plant it unto you, Father God, because this is your kingdom, oh God. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you just continue to bless the offering, oh God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would just continue to move, oh God, beyond our understanding, Lord God. We trust in you for all things, Lord. And we pray, Lord God, that we release what's in our hands, what you've given to us. And we just give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. give God praise, glory, and honor, and reverence all the time. But on this day, the resurrected one, the one who created the entryway, the stairway to heaven for us, let's express our love together for him, how much we love him. That's what we need to do more and more, let him know how much we love him. We ask for things, we pray, we do various things to give him honor, but let's let him know on this day, how much we love him for what he has done in becoming our stairway to heaven.
worship in this place. Glory. Lord, we glory to the King. of the Lord, we appreciate you worshiping with us today, family and friends, and we just uh, welcome you and uh, also our uh, online audience. We just thank you so much for tuning into our service because you could be on any, at anybody's service. So we just thank you for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. You know what? We are a, a nation. We're a nation who just loves stories. How about you? Any, any of you stories, you just love stories. I know some exhorters out there, you know, just love stories. We, you know, we see stories on, uh, on the big screens in Hollywood. That's why we go to the movies. You know, we may have our favorite movie that we know is coming out and and what do we do? They're talking about it. They may be talking about it for years. Like the incredible, somebody I took to see it, they didn't like it. They were like, I don't even know what all the, you know, all the talk was about. But I was like, I really like the first, you know, incredible. So they, it took, I don't know how many years, it seemed like 10 years to come out. But I was anticipating it. I was like, I'm going to go see it as soon as it, it arrives. I mean, you schedule, you, you, you clear your schedule, you clear out your, your, your money, you get your money ready and all that, because you know you're going to go see that, that show, amen? Because the, the stories are so important. They, they, they mean so much to us. But this is not just uh, 
it didn't just come about in the United States. This is really something that, that goes all the way back to the beginning. And even ancient cultures, they just love stories. As a matter of fact, they use storytelling as a way to uh, transfer tradition. And they, they may have done it uh, orally through oral tradition, and they wanted to pass down some of the truths and, and richness of their culture. They wanted to pass that down to the next generation. It's kind of like... Um, Maybe our, our grandmas, you know, passing down their recipes and, and the, you know, some good old wisdom. You, we, does anybody get some wisdom and sound wisdom? Uh, sometimes the wisdom may not have been biblical. Like, you know, you keep your, your, yours a little bit to the side just in case he leave you stuff like, I don't know if it was <laughs> biblical, but we, we really enjoyed being able to have that kind of wisdom. And that is really the power of a story. But not only that, Stories could really transform your life. And, and I was just wondering, I was like, what is it? What is it about, uh, about stories that is so powerful, that is so captivating? And I believe it's the hope that it offers. I believe it's the end of the story, what you could expect. You know, the, the, uh, the, the guy gets the girl. You know, it has kind of a happy ending. The, the villain, uh, you know, the superhero he conquers the villain and, and he, you know, at good, uh, conquers evil. It's, it's just the idea that it is going to be a good ending. Who likes a good ending in the story? I mean, you watch it. It may have some twists and turns to the plot and you may not know some things that, that, that happen or, or you may not know that the, the key players are going to experience, you know, such, you know, trials and, and difficulties. But in the end, when they triumph, it just brings us such great joy. I mean, we're just like, yes, that, that was a good movie. Hallelujah. And, and so I believe the, any history buffs in the house, the history buffs to the comedians, any comedians in the house, uh, any social media content creators. I, I saw somebody hitting their spouse. Co content creators, uh, any, any historians, are there any journalists, uh, are there any uh, creatives and artists in the house? For, for them, the story is everything. So it is with today. We're commemorating the greatest story ever told. This story is so powerful that it in and of itself is the most powerful message that has transformative power in it concerning everybody. We, we saw it in the children. I mean, it, it, it could start as early as just the little babies to whoever the oldest is in the house today. Praise God. That's not me, but I thank God I, I'm getting older. I thank God for every year. Amen. For every birthday. <laughs> Hallelujah. And whoever's the oldest, I celebrate you today because God has been good. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> So we just want to talk just for a few moments. I know we have the children in here. Hopefully they'll pay attention. And I know it's a lot of moving around and all that kind of stuff. But hopefully they'll pay attention just for a few moments as we visit this extraordinary story. And we call it the king on the cross. Hallelujah. And uh, Matthew, who is an eyewitness, see, we're talking about the story. So you got to. You got to go in, enter into the story with me. So Matthew is a disciple of Jesus Christ. And so he's writing from firsthand experience, this historical event that happened. In Matthew uh, uh, 2, it says, Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he? Listen to this introduction as a baby. Who has been born king of the Jews. For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. And Herod the king heard this. He was troubled and all of Jerusalem with him. And assembling the chief priests and scribes, the people inquired of them, where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written. See, the script has already been written. Hallelujah. By the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler 
who will shepherd the people Israel. So what's going on here? What's happening? We see that that uh, the king had arrived on the scene. So it is all about his identity. And so from from birth, that very moment when they the wise men understood that that because of the times and them understanding the times that his his arrival had had uh, had come and all the way to Pilate uh, examining him to see whether or not he was going to be tried as a criminal or, or, you know, crucified. All that happened through that whole span of his lifetime was about his identity. That's why everybody was wondering, are you the king? This is why Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? And then he turned the corner on them. Who do you say that I am? Because it's all about whether or not we're able to identify with his kingship. And so the kingship really, it, it, it spoke to him being the Messiah, the, the soon awaited, the, the awaited king. You know, it had been prophesied and you see that they, they knew where to find the information because they were, they were keepers of the law. So they just looked at, at where it was written and it had been proclaimed. And what they did is then they were like, but this is what's supposed to happen because the prophets have already spoke of this. So that wasn't really news to the Jews because they were waiting his survival, just like the church of our day. What are we, what are we expecting? His return. <laughs> so even though it's been years, just like for them, you know, well, it's been years. It's been years. We've been hearing that all along. But, but we've been hearing that Christ is returning all along, all, probably perhaps all of our lifetime. But the reality is that it will be, uh, happen, and we should be expecting his arrival. And so the Christ the King, the Messiah, the one who was, who was uh, assigned to, to, uh, to be the deliverer of, of Israel, the only problem is they thought that he was going to be a natural king. And this is why here it was a little bit trouble. Here it was like, wait a minute, the who? Who, who did you? He said, he, they talk about the king. He said, oh, well, just let me know. Well, you know, you go on and find him and just report back to me. You know, because why? He thought that his natural kingdom was, was uh, threatened by his arrival. And so uh, the wise men understood that. So they didn't, after they found him and went and worshiped him and all that, they didn't even come back. But the whole idea was they understood that he was Messiah. They understood that he was king. They understood that divinity had intersected in humanity. Hallelujah. And that is a game changer. <laughs> That's a world changer. That's a people changer. That's a heart changer. Hallelujah. And so that's really what, what it was all about. That's why the devil, uh, at, his, uh, at his temptation, what did he say? He said, if you are the son of man, turn these stones into bread. So it was all about his identity. And it was interesting that the, the scribes and Pharisees, they were always looking, you know, and trying to trip them up, you know, and during the script, they, they, they're like, wait, 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 now, he, he just healed somebody. Wait, 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 it's the Sabbath. Now, now what, 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 what does the word say about that? They were always trying to trip him up because they were really trying to figure out, is this really the Christ? And remember when, when uh, the, the uh, four friends took their paralytic friend and they, they took the roof off and lured them into, uh, into where Jesus, Jesus' presence was. And Jesus said, my son, thou, thou sins be forgiven thee. And they were like, hold the phone, hold the phone. Wait, 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 wait. This is blasphemy. Why? This man is making himself out to be God. <laughs> And that's what the issue was. Is he the king? And, and what does that mean if he is the king? And so Jesus, because they knew that only God can forgive sins. And so what does this mean for us today? So we, we're going to go a little bit further in the story. So, so it was all about his identity. Because if he is the king, then that changes everything everything and so it was it was that identity and 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 uh then mark uh, who is another eyewitness mark says it like this in mark 1 and 14 and 15 first he talked about him being the christ and then uh, now he talks about how john the baptist uh came on the scene and and then he was leaving off the scene now after john was arrested jesus came into galilee proclaiming the gospel of god and in this one sentence i tell you is the whole big idea you 
know, when somebody is saying a whole bunch or you may read a book, you, 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 they, they may ask you, well, what's the gist of it? What is the big idea? That's what my professor asked me uh, just recently. What's the big idea? And I was like, okay, now, now what you say again? And then they're looking for the note. <laughs> Like y'all are saying, okay, now what's he, where's, where are you going? So anyway, this is the big idea and, and in, in verse 15 and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. The time is at hand. The fulfillment of time that God designed for, for his king to come into the earth, it was now. It was then. And the kingdom, so a king is not a king without a kingdom. It is the time is for the kingdom, God's rule, God's reign to come into the earth. And so the time had arrived. And so uh, Jesus arrived at the, at the right time and he understood fully his assignment. So, so this whole thing about time really deals with not just the, the time that has elapsed, but the fact that a decisive moment in time had arrived. Hallelujah. So Jesus was proclaiming that the moment in time has arrived. Now this it changes everything for mankind because the king is on the scene. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So then he understood what his assignment was as he said, I am a king, but I must suffer. In Mark 8, 31, 32, he says, and he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Why? Because they didn't think a king, a king doesn't suffer. A king is served. A king has all of his needs met. A king has service. But you're talking about suffering? No, may it never be. And Jesus had to rebuke him. He said, I must suffer. And, and, and so that's where we get the whole idea of the king and the cross, because there had to be a payment for a three letter word that seems sometimes in our mind, in our human experience, so insignificant, but it's huge. And that is sin. Just that small three letter word. Because of your sin. Because of my sin. And I wanna bring this to life today because the reality is that that's something we still must deal with. But the good news is that Jesus came and he suffered and he was the substitute for our sins. Because the thing about it, all sin has a penalty and a debt must be paid. Somebody gotta pay it. And so Jesus is the only one who had the ability, the capability of, of, of paying the penalty for our sin. What if, what if your sin was, was up here instead of these wonderful, beautiful uh, three crosses right here that we're looking at, this image? What if our sin was just written up there? What, what, what about that? But I thank God that he paid the price for it to be covered. Hallelujah. No matter what you've done, no matter where life has taken you, and sin is, is a term, it's an archery term, so it's like you, you have the target and you, you uh, shoot the arrow and you know you, you, you're targeting the center. But if you miss the center, you miss the mark. Then, then sometimes we shoot way up here on the board somewhere. Sometimes we don't even hit it at all. That's how far we get, we're off. But yet Jesus, through his suffering, he covered it all. Hallelujah. And that's good news. That's good news. So the cross was a place of sacrifice. The, the, for, uh, 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 he was a propitiation. That's a good word, a big long word to say that he substituted for our sins. The, Christ, the cross was a place of exchange where Jesus died so that we can live. Hallelujah. Because it had to be have full payment. You know, it's a legal, it's like a legal system. You know, when somebody's done you wrong, what, what do you want to do? Did somebody say, get them back? Did... Yeah, this the saints, right? Somebody done you wrong. Hopefully you'll point the finger at yourself. Somebody's done you wrong, you want to retaliate. But the beauty of forgiveness is that 
you can't pay the debt. And so somebody else assumes it because it has to be paid for. And so instead of us paying for it, Jesus put it on his record. He took our sin upon him so that it can be satisfied because it's not going away. If, if, if uh, you know, a creditor, you owe a creditor, maybe we'll understand this. Since we so holier than now, we don't vindicate. What's wrong with you, Pastor? You need another tip. Okay, but let's deal money then. Let's talk money. So you owe. Whether you like acting like you don't. <laughs> you ignoring the bill. Okay, let's put it in that stack. And they calling you. Oh, hold on. It's probably in a stack somewhere. You ignoring it? It's still there. And it ain't going nowhere. It may even go to the back of your mind. But in a creditor's mind, you still owe. You may not pay them. But then they're going to send it to somebody else. For the payment. It ain't going nowhere. So... When somebody does you wrong, either you're going to have to pay it or they're going to take it upon themselves to forgive it. But it has, somebody got to gotta take the, blow, the brunt. And that's why when somebody does us wrong, we cannot, we really, there's nothing they could do. And if you try to make them pay, you become just like them. Because now you're the bitter one. Now you're vindicating. Now you're talking about them just like they talked about you. And they talked about your mama, so you're talking about their mama. I forgot I was in church. Hold on, let me go. Let me go back to my notes, Pastor Dawson. I'm in church, saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, that with a burning fire. I know, I know. I'm just trying to make a point. That is costly. So if you assume it upon yourself and say, that's okay, I release you, it costs you something. That's why it's so hard to forgive, because it hurts. You may be crying, oh, I don't really want to do this, Jesus, but I know this is your word. You, it's painful. And so that's why he suffered, because all forgiveness comes with a price. It's a suffering that's involved in it. Instead of it going on your record, it's on that person's record. Mm, mm, mm. And I don't even have time to, to exegete this like I want to. But this is the reason for the cross. And I just want to take us just briefly to this sacrifice and really what it looked like. Because this wasn't a pretty sight. This was not a pretty sight. So Pilate was like, are you the king? That's the question. Jesus says, thou sayest. And then he goes to the Jews. He's like, listen, this is your king. I, I, okay, wait. You have And, uh, and they're like, here, here, this is your king. They're like, we want Caesar. We, we, don't want, we don't want Jesus. Go on and crucify him. Give us Barabbas. And so the Romans had a, a very cruel system. Just give me, just give me a minute. Of crucifixion. And we just want, I told you, we want to make this real today because we don't want to be Oh, yeah, yeah, Jesus died for my sins. Yes. No, we want to we wanna experience the reality of, of the cost. I mean, just, just trying to communicate just a little bit. So, really, what they did is they, they had this flagellum, they call it, and they had, like, it has, like, metal in here, and it had bones in here. They just took this leather and, and allowed the leather and the bones to be in it. And then they would bend the, the victim over, either have them at a, on a pole, like around a pole, or bend them over and with their hands tied. And I'm a girl, so just excuse how this looks. <laughs> and, and, and my assistants were back there, they said, please don't hurt yourself with that. <laughs> so, <sighs> but they had one soldier on the one side and one on the other. So then they would, mm. that felt pretty good, the trees. I didn't, I didn't hit myself. Okay. Mm. 
So then the other one take his turn as he's bent over. Bent over is just his back is exposed. He can't do nothing. His hands are tied. This is all about you the king. You the king. And he just they just beat him until with these bones and these this metal. What it's doing is they're beating him. It's just ripping, ripping the skin. And a lot of victims couldn't even survive the flogging. And it would render them so weak. And this is the, what the prophet said, but he was bruised and chastised for your iniquity. Chastisement of, his, of your peace was, was upon him by his stripes. You are healed. Hallelujah. You were healed. Hallelujah. And 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 then it's like his his back was they say they just kinda you could just the organs were exposed. It was so it was so deeply afflicted. And um and that's why it was hard for him to, to carry his own cross. And then they did the crown of of thorns. So what did he do? He replaced his royal crown for a crown of shame. Shame and suffering. But he was a king. Kings have royal crowns. So then they put this crown of thorns on him. They were really mocking him. They put on the robe. They, they'll strip you of your, your, your clothing. Then he gave him a robe because they were mocking him. And they gave him a, a, a royal robe. And then they would slap him and spit on him. They say, prophesy to me now. Who, who, who slapped you? The kind of mockery, the kind of shame, the kind of suffering that no human should really ever encounter. It wasn't just physical, it was emotionally. It, it, it was spiritually, you know, Jesus had never been separated from the Father. And when he said, it, it is finished, and then boy, he said, Father, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Because our sin was so heavy upon him as he paid the penalty for you, as he paid the penalty for me. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin as he hung on the cross and bore it for us and this is the this is just a sample of the nail it wasn't you know the, those little nails we use it wasn't like that this is the nail and they drove it into his arms at the the place where he could feel it most like that nerve and they drove it in All because of that three-letter word, our sin. He became sin for us. He who knew no sin. What was the exchange? So you might be righteous. You might become the righteousness of God. And so the cross represented his suffering. But it represented price being paid in full. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It represented the things and the ways that we couldn't get to God. Now a way has been made because you've forgiven. It represented slaves who were in bondage. He said, I, I came to give my life. I didn't come to be served, I, but I came to give my life a ransom for many. And that means to willingly give it up. Remember, they couldn't take it. So he willingly laid it down. A ransom as the payment price for sin, for slaves to be released from slavery. We were enslaved to sin. Try, try getting out of sin by yourself. Try doing it within your own measure. I tried. I tried to be as self-righteous and as good as I could be. I tried my hardest with self-will and, and, and inner strength. I tried to be able to overcome 
the areas in my life where I knew weren't pleasing to God, but I failed miserably. Because only God can satisfy my debt. Hallelujah. Mm. And once I understood that it's not my righteousness, the only way I'm going to even resemble him is to receive the sacrifice. Hallelujah. And then the final aspect of this is the idea that when he said that statement, the kingdom of God is at hand. The time is now. It's been fulfilled. The kingdom has come. Repent and believe the gospel. So he turns the corner. He preaches, he, he lets them know plainly about why I'm here. I'm clear about my purpose. I know the, the debt that's owed because of your sin and your transgression is owed to God. And I'm going to go to the cross on your behalf and pay that in full. But it doesn't stop there. He's calling for a response. He said, repent and believe the gospel. And you know, in the Greek, when you look at that, it's present tense, it's active, and it is an imperative. So it says, I'm not talking about yesterday. I ain't talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about today. When it's present tense, it's now. He said, repent now. Change your thinking today. Change how you, how you think about your sin and missing the mark and how you think about the king. Is he the king? Is he not the king? I heard the story. I don't know. There were some gaps in the story that need to be filled in before I can truly embrace this. Repent and believe. John the Baptist is off the scene. Jesus has come on the scene. He's gone to the cross. And now the cross demands that we cannot, we cannot remain neutral. Like some people dare would say Jesus was a lunatic, he, a phony. They, they ain't going to go that far. But then they don't want, don't want to come on this side. Well, if he's not a phony, believe. Well, I'm not. I'm not certain about all that, too. Why is, why, is, why there's so many religions in the world? Okay, well, we ain't talking about all the other. We're talking about the good news. We're talking about the only one who could claim to be king. We're talking about the one who rose from the grave and all of his claims about being God. Hallelujah. Were verified. Hallelujah. And Paul even said it like this. There are 500 people living that he showed himself to. In other words, you could go and get their story. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because they're still alive. And nobody's going to put their life on the line like that because they were getting killed because they believe that. And so he's saying that he rose from the grave. The, the tomb is empty. The children told us today. It is empty. But what does that mean for me? That means that now there has to be a response to this good news of the gospel. It should bring us like the movies. It should bring us glad tidings. We should be so excited that Jesus came. When we're looking at our situations uh, and our money's not adding up and our, and our relationships are going out of whack and we got stuff going on in our bodies and all kinds of stuff is happening around us, we should be glad because there's good news the king has arrived to the scene hallelujah and he supplies all the need you don't have to worry about what you lack because he has an inexhaustible supply of whatever it is that you have need of hallelujah glory to God so I don't want this Easter resurrection message uh, to, to just be an ordinary you know like you know you, you, some people see movies like a hundred times some people go see the movie over and over you know I don't want it to just be ordinary I I've heard that, you know, this is just normal kind of thing. I want it to be enacted, you know, because we have to see ourselves in the story. Hallelujah. And ourselves in the story meant that it was for me. Hallelujah. That was my iniquity. That was my sin. That was my rebellion. That's my transgressions. That's every time he prompts me to do something and I don't do it. That's what the cross was about. Hallelujah. And so I was just thinking, we don't want, I, I was just sitting with this reality. You know, everything new becomes old. 
You know you're excited about your car. I got a new car. Then they get old. You act like, oh, yeah, that old car. You know, it's just the, the newness, it just wears off. You know, hot becomes lukewarm, becomes cold. You know, what's what's sharp becomes dull. Relationships, the love that just fluttered in your heart at one point. Oh, I just can't wait to see you. Then it's like, are you home? (laughs) Not church people. You're like, you ain't had no more errands. I was, pretty, I was pretty much enjoying some time without you. I got to look at you like all day, every day. That's why in COVID, I was like, yes, the love should be rekindled. People aren't able to see each other. They're like, who are you? Are we talking about lovers? It becomes, it's ordinary. Don't make my heart flutter no more. But this gospel message cannot become normal. It can't become something that we're so familiar with to where it loses its impact and its power on our lives and for our lives right now. Like that could say, right now. What are you dealing with right now? It's the power of the gospel that's going to transform it. It's not no other new message. It's not no, no other remedy. There's no other remedy. But the king and the cross in this resurrection with all power in his hand to impact your life. So as I sat with this, I had to ask myself some questions. Do I really depend on Jesus for all that? Do I depend on him? When life is heavy? Do I depend on him when it seems as if this call, this response that he's requiring is more than I feel like I could give? Do I depend on him when someone's placing a demand on my life? And you know, we, we, we have such privacy these days with phones, you could be so accessible and then inaccessible. And you get the text, and you act like you ain't see it. Hey, uh, uh, keep it real. Oh, uh, no, nah, that's going to cost me two hours. I'm talking about a, self, a self-sacrificing, self-giving love. The kind of love that he doesn't need anything from us. That's why it's complete, and that's why it's so powerful. But our love, we need. But it's going to be costly. It's costly when somebody's not loving you back to still love them. I'm talking about the power of the good news. See this normal human stuff? They don't have no power. I'm talking about transcending even what we feel we're capable of. And I believe even as I prayed yesterday and I was just laying on the floor here and and just wept before God because of the price. It's going to cost you something. It cost him everything, but he said, if anyone comes after me, let him take up his own cross and follow me. In other words, this gospel is a following Jesus to the crucifixion. It's the self that has to die. When it's a king, they have sovereign rule. It ain't about, well, let me interject what I think. It's a completely his will. So I said, I'm going to be a TV journalist and he said I'm calling you to preach the good news 
can your understanding of the gospel enable you to follow him even to the forsaking of what you feel your life's dream is? And your life's ambition. And follow him and say, now what am I supposed to be doing? I don't even think I'm qualified. I mean, what, what in the world? It's a cost. And so what is Jesus saying? I, I really like the way this one theologian said this as I close. Can you, can you get this for me, please? Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, I had, again, I had to sit with this afresh. You know, uh, it, 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 have I gotten used to, you know, you get used to the routine and the church uh, protocol and the assignment and everything that, that, that has to, uh, to do with it. You know, I come to church, uh, you know, we give, you know, we, we sing some worship songs, you know, we go, we leave. Mm, mm, mm. He said it like this concerning this, this discipleship that the gospel calls for. It's the essential, this self-sacrifice is essential to discipleship. So what Jesus is calling for is thus a radical abandonment of one's own identity and self-determination and join it to the place of the execution where we're following him. To deny means to refuse, to give, give thought, to, to express concern for, to disregard, to pay no attention to, denial of self, to say no to. And so this is the key. Such self-denial is a different, it's on a different level altogether. Listen to this. This is really, really important as I'm closing. It's altogether different from giving up chocolate for Lent. It's not the denial of something to the self, but the denial of the self itself. We could go on fast. We could do the, the, the uh, spiritual stuff. But have we denied the self itself? Literal loss of one's life which the disciples is called to accept potentially results in following Jesus. This is a gospel message. This is great news. This is transformative. So the whole idea is understanding that one day in the play, if you're on Broadway, the curtains will fall, will close, the lights, the cameras are going to go off, the applause, applause of the audience is going to fade, and even if you get an encore, that's going to cease. The audience is going to leave. And you know, at the end of any story, they say the end. The end is imminent. And so the question that I believe God is asking us is, is Jesus truly your king? A king sits on the throne, but now it's the throne of our hearts. And he rules from there. He gives instructions and orders and, and guides us, loves us, cares for us. It said he's going to shepherd us. He's not a tyrant like the devil and just, just enslave us and, and strip and kill, still destroy. No, he's one who's just, as we're connected to him, he's given us everything. Everything. Is he the king? Is he your king? Father, we just end on that question where we, <clears throat> we ponder whether or not we're really at the helm or you really at the helm. Are we really responding to your desires and your will or our desires and our will and we put you in there somewhere? Have we denied 
still some people who want to respond. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is what it's all about. When the wise men came, you know what they did? They said, where was the king? We have come to worship him. Is that what we've come for? Hallelujah. Come on, let's just enter into this sacred space of worship. And come on, some more people need to respond. Maybe you need to say, a fresh yes. Thank you. 
Pastor. Um, can you come? Minister Lisa. waiting on you. Hallelujah. He was waiting on you. If you could just stay, stay up here. Can't you hear his voice calling? Just, just stay up here just for a Salvation. Where, where are um? Okay, come on. Come on. If, if you could follow our uh, connector team.
Let's just give God praise for hallelujah what he's done. Praise God for all of the life changes, all of the decisions that have been made in Jesus' name. If they can, uh, they can, we're, just follow our connector right here and she's going to get additional information. If somebody could go help Deaconess Phyllis, somebody need to go help her for me. Yeah, you, you guys, go ahead and, and thank you so much. We just want to be able to connect with you on your decision for Christ. Come on, come on. The angels are rejoicing. It was a mighty move of God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. These are eternal decisions that are being made. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Anybody else who's a connector, I need you to go back. Uh, and, and help out, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God for this harvest. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So that's, that's why I'm saying uh, I was on my face before God. And it's just like, if we do accept the next level, the next level of, of sacrifice to love my people, to shepherd my people, to care for my people, to take time for my people. I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whatever I could amass and do in and of myself or life I could build for myself, it, compa it, it pales compared to eternal matters. You, you can go ahead and turn that off for me, praise God. Hallelujah. It pales. The, the things that we do in exchange and so whatever way God is just asking you for it, whether it's a new commitment, a first commitment, yielding your life fully to him, involving the king in every aspect of your life, not just compartments. I just compel you today that this, this message on the king and the cross, that is, I pray that it's impacted your life in a way in real time, real time. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Somebody's going to do the announcements, uh, what, Minister Didi? Because I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, come on, come on up. <laughs> come, come on up and get the mic. <laughs> well, I love you, people. Praise God. Praise God. What an awesome Sunday we have had. Oh, my goodness. From everything from the worship to the word. And I'm telling you, our children did an absolutely phenomenal job. Minister Monique is happy about that. Hallelujah. But they were on point ready, ready to give their speeches and sing their songs. So we are just so excited about that. Uh, just a few things to share with you before we leave. The registration is open for the School of Prayer, the spring session, and they take the sessions take place May 4th and May 18th, and you can sign up online or in the foyer for either the beginner, intermediate, or advanced level, uh, and the cost is $65 per person. And then also our first annual spring cleaning event is starting this Saturday, April 6th through April 10th. Each auxiliary is being asked to present uh, or to be present to organize and clean their uh, respective areas of all unused equipment and material that may be broken or damaged. So this is uh, a morning, sh there is a morning shift, 10.30 a.m. to 2 p.m., and then an afternoon shift from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. each day. So please sign up in the foyer for this event. And then it is time for us to celebrate Pastor Tanya's 60th birthday with a cupcake reception on April 14th. Hallelujah. So everyone's invited to join us in the fellowship hall immediately following service that day. And then mark your calendars for these upcoming events. The registration for uh, CRIM group training is April 14th. Men's fellowship is Saturday, April 27th. Mother-daughter luncheon, Saturday, May 11th. And then the family conference is June 7th through the 9th. And more details about all of those events. Father, we are so thankful unto you. 
in regards to what you have done for our lives. We thank you that you laid your life down. And we thank you that because Jesus rose again, we rose with him in the newness of life. And we are so ever grateful unto you, God, and we thank you that we can live each and every day in your life. And we bless you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you and happy resurrection.